So we're coming up on the end of the year, probably late November. You're going to start seeing end of the year articles show up. I, of course, have mine, but I'm getting a bit of a head start here because I want to give one final reassessment of that uh, best and worst genres for indie tier list I did at the beginning of this year. It's late enough, you know, we still have two and a half months left, but it's late enough we can get a good look at some of the numbers behind these genres, how well games in them have sold, different averages, and it should give us some general idea of how far off the mark I was. And I was way off the mark in some cases. This I will tell you in advance, this was very much hit or miss. When it came to me making these calls, I either split the bullseye in two or I didn't even hit the target. There, there weren't a lot of cases where I was somewhat right. I was dead on or I was way off. So I should have that tier list on the screen for you to see. I did manage to delete the original file. So if this one looks a little crappy, that's why I had to get it from somewhere else. But I returned to this in after a few months and reassessed it promoted a few, demoed a few. In particular, uh, I moved Metroidvanias up a few slots. So that was way too low. And I decided that conventional platformers, 2D platformers, those were way too high. And incidentally, as you're about to see, those are the ones where I was the farthest off the mark. Those are the ones where I was really wrong. And those adjustments were definitely warranted. But we're going to get into, I've got a couple charts for you to see. This is going to be very visually exciting. I have charts. And the first chart is going to be the average revenue for indie games, I should mention, released in 2024, first released in 2024. So this will omit a few things that came out of early access, but I don't think it'll be too far off the mark. This should be relatively accurate. We're going to start with the mean average revenue. I don't like means. Uh, mean is quite notoriously, can be very skewed by outliers and everything in any form of media you care to look at has outliers these days. However, the mean average will give us a pretty good idea of just overall what sort of these markets for these games looks like. What we see is that of the ones, I should mention, I'm not going to do all 15 because open world survival is kind of a weird one. It's hard to track, and I ended up getting really weird outlier results, so I left that one off. We do have the other 14, of which Metroidvania is far and away the highest. Again, off the mark there, I think. Honestly, I, I would blame this on Silk Song not coming out, but I, from what I've seen, it seems like these games have a pretty loyal fan base who are willing to try new things, and it's not just the one, not just a couple of games that are keeping these things alive. People complain there are a lot of Metroidvanias, and this is why, because they're popular, because people like them, because a lot of people like them. Then at the bottom, we've got get platform platformers, conventional platformers, precision platformers are going to be dead last in most of these charts we look, look at. So you can kind of see, again, this tracks with what I think most people would think, uh, city builders, deck builders, ARPGs, first person shooters, all pretty high. But again, this is mean average, and mean average is not that accurate if you're trying to capture what the typical developer experience. And that's what we were looking at. Not overall. Not overall, but what it would look like for the typical person working in that genre. So that's going to lead us to the median. And the median is going to be far lower. Before I go to this next chart, I do want to note that the average, the mean average revenue is in thousands of dollars. Uh, the median is not. It is a lot lower, but you will notice, again, a very significant outlier here. This was a fantastic year for your typical city builder developer. Again, shouldn't come as a shock to anyone. City builders have become a really strong subgenre. And what's interesting to me is I had it kind of in the middle of my tier list because I thought maybe, at least in part, that this might be a situation where the higher production value games might kind of skew things. But honestly, there are a lot of city builders that are fairly modest, that are low-priced, and are doing very, very well. Like, there is a huge demand for these games after, you know, the industry kind of pretended that it didn't exist for a long time. 
I should mention that these are all coming off of Steam tags, and Steam tags are weird. Uh, a lot of games do get the City Builder tag that are not pure City Builders, but even if you want to say, well, that skews things a little bit, clearly uh, what we see here is that games that at least feature that kind of design a city, design a colony, whatever, those kind of elements are very popular. Deck Builders also did very well. JRPGs? I am going to take a victory lap there because, mostly because I am still upset that all these industry experts have spent 20 plus years declaring the JRPG dead and trying to kill it off. So I'm very glad to see it's doing so well here. And then at the bottom, we've got platformers again and first person shooters. First person shooters are tough. Um, in a little bit, we're going to see exactly how tough they are. Here's where it gets tricky, though. We're looking at money right now which can also be a little bit inaccurate because these games come at very different price points and they come at very different average price points. Just looking at the 14 I have listed here, the averages for the price for these games range from a little over $5 for horror games to uh, a little over $15 for ARPGs. So what about just raw sales? Well, sales are reported as much, but you can kind of take a stab at them. You, you just do a little basic division, and here we have the average sales for each of these genres. Again, Metroidvanias, very near the top. Uh, First-person shooters doing very well. FPSs are surprisingly cheap. Uh, on average, I'm kind of amazed by that. You know, horror games doing okay. Here, JRPGs are actually fairly surprisingly expensive. Uh, we are clearly well past the days of Steam just being buried under, you know, like, quick flip RPG maker dross. Like, these games are getting flashier, they have uh, better production values, and they're just, just a lot nicer to look at. So there are maybe fewer of them, or maybe just fewer that are garbage. But you're not seeing these really cheap flip over. I think I once bought a bundle of those cheap shit RPGs where it was 12 games for I think like a buck and a half or something. It was absolutely absurd, most of which I never played because they were terrible. We have one more to look at here, and this is uh, kind of one of my numbers. What I'm looking at is for this final chart is going to be the ratio of the mean to the median. Now, this is me trying to figure out how hit-driven these genres are. These things being hit-driven, that, that concept shows up a lot. We're going to talk about that in State of Indie when that comes out next month. There is this issue where sometimes a genre can look like it's on fire because it has a few big hits. And really, in the indie space, nobody cares about anything but the biggest of the biggest of the big. So people come away with the impression that like horror is the best genre to make a game is because it has like three or four games that get meme status, but there's tons of horror games. So that's not necessarily the best one. So what this next is, uh, chart is going to show is it's an index demonstrating how hit-driven what each of these genres are. The higher the number is, the more success depends on you being a massive success. It means there's a bigger difference between the median, between the typical experience, and the big dogs. And we can, again, we've got a pretty obvious outlier here in first-person shooters, which tracks. People who develop, whenever I've talked, whenever I do my SOI interviews, the, the first-person shooter developers tell me that it's tough. It's a tough one to crack because it is like a AAA developer, big dog type of genre. And people will compare you to things like Call of Duty, to the more recent Doom titles. And therefore, it's harder to win out. So this is very feast or famine. Either you're a success or you're probably not doing so well. Now, we move down to the bottom, which are kind of the safer genres. We have visual novels, which I described. I mentioned that that's a very safe one to work in. We have City Builders, JRPG, Adventure, Horror, Deck Builder. And then at the top, you've got first-person shooters, action RPGs, action roguelikes, and strategy. Now, the action roguelike is a little bit of, is a little different there, but if we remove that from the equation, 
you're going to know some similarities between the games that are the easiest, that are the safest for developers to get into, and the ones that are the hardest, which is that the safest genres tend to fall into one of two categories. These are either genres that were more or less created in the indie space, or they are genres that the A-tier developers just abandoned ages ago. And this is something we're going to get into in SOI. Very much, if you are working in the indie space, you don't want to compete with a AAA deck. Because you're, you're, you're going to lose that matchup. People can talk about, oh, the indies are better, and then they go back to their channel where they make strategy guides for COD Warzone or whatever. I mean, we, we know this. The best year for indies overall tend to be years where AAA is weak. But the best year for any specific genre in indie tends to be if the AAA developers just aren't working in it. Because at the top then, strategy, ARPG, FPS, those are the big dog genres. And they're much harder for smaller developers to break into. So there is your lesson. If you want to get into this, if, if for some reason you want to get into this space, you want to pick a target, you want to pick a genre that is not being flooded by these AAA Games. You just have an easier time. You are judged less harshly. People tend to be a little nicer to you for these things. So there's the lesson. So I will leave it up to you as to how correct or incorrect I was. In some of these cases, it's up for debate. Uh, sometimes one chart says thing, one, one says another. But that is, I guess, transparency on my behalf. So I might do another tier list for 2025, making my new guesses, seeing if I can make them a little bit less embarrassing. But for now, we are done. So thank you very much, and I shall see you on another day.